welcome to Empowered Heart to Heart, where you'll hear messages of hope, conversations that heal, and interviews that empower. Well, hey! All righty, all righty. This is Rhonda Simmons, and I am your summit host for the Balance Ministry Pastors Wives Summit coming up next week. You want to be in the room? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, yes, yes. yes. You, do. you do, you do, you do. Yes, and I am not alone. I brought two of the 15 speakers with me, Susan Rayner and Dr. J. Michelle Van. Let's hear a hearty <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> Oh my goodness. I am so excited. I tell you um, how God directed me to such wonderful speakers for this Pastor's Wives Summit is nothing short of a miracle to me anyway. I'm sure he does this stuff all the time. <laughs> but for me, <laughs> for me, it's just a miracle and it's been a wonderful experience. Um what do you ladies think of the summit so far and what, what are your anticipations? I'll let her go first. I am just excited about the fact that, you know, to be able to get this many pastors wives together, um, to get all of us coming together to share our thoughts, to share our experience, to share what God has put on our heart to me is just an, a phenomenal thing. Mm. Um, I believe that, you know, pastors are great. Pastors do wonderful things, but we do the bulk of the work. <laughs> so I think it's a phenomenal opportunity when we can come together and really empower each other. So I'm excited. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. What would you like to add, Susan? Oh, I'm just, I mean, I think I said it the other day. I, I kind of pushed it. I did a little live promotion on my um page there on Facebook. And one of the things that I said was that we as pastor's wives to get to a point that we're burnt out. And we can't even see it because we're so just trying to keep going and keep pushing forward. And so I think that the summit is here to help us get clarity and to help us with that session of burnout that we're going going through at the current moment. Because I know how I am. I, I let things just keep going and going and going. And I don't step back because I think everybody needs me. And so to me, this summit is great because it's going to give me insight. It's going to give me steps. It's going to give me uh, goals that I need to achieve. I just, I don't know. I'm just really, really excited about it because I personally, I'm excited about hearing everybody else and getting some ideas from them. It's something that I can take back with me to help me keep ministering and furthering the gospel because that's what this is all about. If we as pastor's wives are burned out, then how are we helping those in our church? Yes, yes, yes. You are speaking everybody's language. <laughs> <laughs> and you too, Dr. Van, because you were saying that uh, we do the bulk of the work and it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're the glue. Um, you know, uh, one of the things as I was planning all of this, one of the things I kept thinking about was that um, sometimes pastor's wives feel like they don't have a voice, mm. that they don't belong in the room, that um, they they have no identity. Because think about it. You're always introduced as the pastor's wife, like you had no name before you <laughs> married him. You know? Exactly. You know, yeah. I mean, all respect to the pastor. Don't get me wrong. This is this is not we're not pastor bashing. This no, not no, no, <laughs> not at all. No. Um, it's just that. You you did have an identity before you said I do. <laughs> oh my goodness! And so one of the things that that um, I wanted to point out during this pop up, and I know it was just a pop up, and I'm so glad that you all are here with me, um, is I wanted to talk about what this summit is not, and mm. it is not a spill the tea. You know, for anyone mm -hmm. wondering, well, what is this summit all about? And is this just a gossip hour? No, this mm -mm. is not that. In mm -hmm. fact, you're dealing with the ladies who feel the brunt right. of being gossiped about. So they're not doing this. Mm -mm. They're not doing this. This is not a spill the tea. We're not uh, here to talk about 
uh, what church you belong to and who's your pastor, what city are you in. We're not bashing anybody. We want you to look at this summit, this three day summit starting March, excuse me, February 29th, yeah. March the 2nd. Yeah. You want to uh, view it as a professional development for pastors' wives. Mm -hmm. It's so Which important. There is none. There is no professional development. No. Wives yes. Because there is no definition. So if we really, if we really look at it, there is no book. There is no guide for who you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to do as a pastor's wife. Now, granted, some of us have written some books and some of us have tried to do some things to help, but for the most part, there is no you go into the Bible, there's no definition of the pastor's wife. Mm-mm. And, mm -mm. you know, as you get to looking at it, as you get to working, as you get to, you know, you get in, uh, your husband has an expectation, the congregants have an expectation, you have an expectation, people in the world have an expectation. There's all these expectations of you with no job description. Mm -hmm. yes. Where do they do that at? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I want to add something to that because she's saying that about expectations that are being there. So I was raised in a pastor's home. So I had a mother that pretty well guided me in how a pastor's wife, you know, is supposed to be. Um, and I watched her. I watched her take on everything. So in my mind, because she did everything, then I'm supposed to do everything. And that was the guide that I have. So looking at it now, I think back and I think, man, I, I I don't have to do everything there. There are times that I can set my boundaries and I can say, no, I'm going to delegate this to someone else that is able to do that. But even with an example, I still had questions of how I was supposed to handle the church. And like she said, the doctor said, there's no manual out there. And so I can't imagine being a pastor's wife and not having any example at all, even and stepping into that role as a pastor's wife. And, and I feel like I'm, you may be running blind a little bit because you're wondering, what am I supposed to be doing? How am I supposed to be handling this? You know, how am I, what's, what's my next step of what I'm supposed to be doing other than just supporting my husband and being there for him through this. Sis, I get it. I tell <laughs> I'm, I'm right there with you. My mom was, <laughs> was a pastor's wife, but I was like, I do not want to do that. No. Yes. That, I don't want to do that. Not like yeah. that. <laughs> no, no. no. No, and my mom is a wonderful woman. I love Absolutely. my mother. But Absolutely. I just, man, watching the doing it, everything, doing it all. And I just, I'm like, I can't, I, I don't have that. It's not that I don't have that. Let's, let's take that back. That's what this Pastor's Wife Summit's about is to show us that we do have what it takes to be a pastor's wife. But it's also going to give us the tools to know when's the time to stop and, and say, hey, wait a minute. Somebody else might could do this or, hey, wait a minute, this is more important than that. Learning those little bitty tidbits of information is what's going to help us be better pastor's wives because we've, I've already said it once before and I'm sure it's been said everywhere else. But if I'm burnt out, what good am I to the people that I am shepherding? Absolutely. I'm no, I'm of no use to them. I'm, I'm. I'm wasting what God has given me. And, and I've been there. So I, I know exactly what it's about. I know the burnout. I know what it feels like, yeah. but I also know how to come out of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm thankful for that. And so to me, this pastor's wife summit is what's going to help me even more to just keep moving forward where I need to go. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, it's one of the things that I, I haven't shared with uh, most of you is that uh, I'm planning a uh, pastor's wives uh, cruise in April called the Ooh. Elect Lady Cruise. Yes. Yes. We're going to Cozumel, looking forward to it. And it's so funny because as I was, um, you know, letting pastor's wives that I knew um, be aware of it, I had to quickly tell them, I'm not asking you to pray. I'm not asking you to sing. I'm not asking you to preach. I'm not asking you to teach a Bible study. I'm not asking you to don't don't bring your Sunday morning yeah. clothes. I just 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 I'm expecting you to bring your flip flops. So you can take a regular you know, person. Yes, yes, because you know one thing about leadership that um, is the downside. I was I would say 
is that you're always up. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you have to be strong for everybody. It's like, you know, the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders have nothing on pastor's wives. <laughs> you have to be everybody's cheerleader. <laughs> Yes, and it is exhausting. Yeah, it is exhausting wearing that smile, and that's why sometimes yeah. I'll say on Monday your face might be hurting because you've had to plaster that smile, you know, all day long. And you know, how are you doing? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. You yeah. know, good and well. You're exhausted, <laughs> but no, you can't and I, that. And I, I've come to the point where I just will say, "Girl, I'm tired." Yeah. What? What? I'm tired. I mean, and yeah. because sometimes they need to know that they mm-hmm. need because there's this expectation and there's this feeling that we're superhuman and we're not. Yeah. Girl, I'm tired. Uh, this or that, you know, oh, my stomach hurts or whatever. I don't I I well, in 33 years, I've gotten to the point where I don't fake the funky part. Like if I'm not good, I'm not good. And I'm just going to tell you. Yeah. If I, you know, if it's a great day, then woo, we go, you know, we can, we can run around the block, but if it's not, it's not. And I'm not going to fake it anymore. Cause it's, it's too, it's, it's too hard to do. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and this is why we're having this summit because mm-hmm. We can sit here all night and talk about all the problems. Um, And what's interesting is that in talking with um, the speakers individually, I'm finding out it's the same problems across denominations, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, across, you know, church organizations. It's Mm -hmm. the same problems. And, you know, this this summit is not um, a debate on doctrine. Um, It's kind of like when you go to the doctor for a checkup. You know, you're you're not. It never came comes up in my appointments, doctor. I'd like to know: Are you an apostolic? Because if you're not, then I'm, I can't see you. I cannot hear you. It, it just doesn't come up in the conversation. No. Not when I go. You know, maybe you all do, and maybe I just need to get saved some more. But I'm there for a reason. I'm there yeah. because he has the knowledge to help me. That's this right. is what this summit is for, um, because. We have no problems identifying the problem. It is how do I deal with it? Um, One of the things that um, I am so excited about um, is because um, we'll be talking about topics like mental health and ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, people don't, you know, they think that because you're in ministry, Mm -hmm. surely, you know, Jesus is your Mm -hmm. wonderful counselor. Yes, he He is. is. But yeah, he is. I can still be so stressed out that, you know, I'm yes. on the edge and if mm-hmm. you don't help me, I'm gonna catch some Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, real but talk. You should be glad that I have Jesus. Yes, real talk. You know, it's so funny you say that, Dr. Van, because I'll never forget uh, as a school administrator, I can't remember what went wrong that day. I, when I left the problem going on in, in somewhere else in the building, I went back to my office and I said to everybody in the office, y'all need to be glad right now that Jesus lives inside of me. <laughs> and they looked at me. I said, because I'm telling you, I'm you'd be that. calling 911. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, in fact, I'm going to yeah. close my door because I think I need to have an emergency <laughs> conversation with them it's right true. now. You know, it's the truth. <laughs> I'm just, I have to be real. I have yeah. to be real. And um, I, I'm so excited. Now, I've asked uh, Susan and Dr. Van not to tell what they're going to uh, be sharing next week. But um, I, I think we can tell the topics. You think? You, is it's that okay? You. Sure. I'm excited about it. Okay. Because here's the thing. These ladies are married to, to their pastor husbands. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mind you, I said pastor husbands. In most circumstances, uh, many of the speakers uh, married their husbands who became pastors. They were husbands first. (laughs) And they had to figure out how in the world do you juggle all that Mm. and keep Jesus first. And Susan, you're going to be talking about, um, what are you going to be talking about? I can tell it, but inter- I'll let you tell it. Yeah, the intersection of marriage and ministry. Yes, yes. yes. Susan and her husband have a wonderful uh, ministry and a heart for marriages. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I, I think we all can agree 
um, when family's not right, when home's not right, it tends to spill over into church. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and and you just can't fake it through services a lot of times. <laughs> when, no. You know, <laughs> especially if you're mad at your spouse and your spouse mm. is the one that has to get up there and preach. And he's got one of those tough sermons and he's mm -hmm. counting on your amen. And you're like, yeah. You know, that's like, because the children's church. That might be one of the hey, that might be one of those times, sister, that he comes in and he's like, uh, honey, can you can you get up there and, and lead worship for a little while while I get my mind on God? But yet I'm over here <laughs> on my piano. God do something because I need help right now. Yeah, so, right. yeah. No. <laughs> yes. Because yes. there have been those moments. There have been those moments. Of, yes. You know, walking yes. in. So Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and Dr. Van, you've got a powerful um, session as well in the form of a question. And so yeah. what are you going to be sharing? Yeah. So what happens when the church becomes your source of depression? Mm. Um, too often as we really begin to navigate all of these things, all of the waters of church, we can be depressed and we can be looking fine. Mm. but stuff ain't right on the inside. Mm -hmm. I have, I have a, a very good pastor, my friend who said that she was sitting in church and had uh, a sister behind her say, mm, look at what our ties bought this week. And she said she had to turn around to her and say, sis, your ties could put a deposit down on my shoes. Stop talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. uh, <laughs> that was bold. Well, her. she's a, she's a sassy one from Louisiana, and she just uh, like, yeah. she said I had enough, and it was just that day. And mm -hmm. she, she, you talking loud enough for me to hear me? Yeah. So I'll, I'm gonna let you know. I, I see the books. I know how much my offering you pay. You you can't put it. Yeah. Deposit on my shoes. And sometimes because we are at that point where we've been pushed and we've been pushed and we've been pushed mm. and we've been pushed, and then we blow up. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes an issue. But we, yes, if we don't right. address those issues if we don't understand what's going on. Yes. Inside, if we don't understand our mental health. We can blow up and, you know, then we've got all this backlash to have to deal with. Yes. yes. That's the truth. And you know something else? You know, I'm not a medical uh, professional. I'm not a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. But I, I firmly believe that when we hold in all of this stress and pain and worry and even anger, and we never find a healthy outlet, mm -hmm. it begins to take its toll on us physically. Oh, and, yes. Those are those, yeah. those are those bitter, angry old, um, you know, mothers at the church that are angry, that are, that are bitter, that, you know, slap out of children and say all kinds of mean things. At the end of the day, if you would just deal with all the stuff, if you will unpack that stuff, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be mad. You wouldn't yes. be, if you go on a vacation and it didn't have, and it wasn't a church convention. Mm -hmm. If you would, you know, take off, take, lift up that skirt a little bit. It's okay. Get, get some air on you. Get some air on your knee. It's all right, baby. You, you won't, I promise you. <laughs> part of the sky. If you get some air on your knees. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you 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 say something uh, very relevant because uh, this past weekend, my husband uh, took me on a cruise, and oh. first time I had ever been on a cruise, it was wonderful, and I had a great time. And of course, uh, we left Thursday and we came back Monday, so that meant I wasn't in church on Sunday. Well, we weren't in church. I mean, of course, he goes with me, but you know, I was. He was fine. He was okay. He was struggling. I, I was struggling. I, I remember thinking I got up early and there were, there was actually a storm out. And so it was very turbulent. I don't know if in my mind I was thinking, well, let me do penance by sitting out here on the balcony in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The storm wasn't coming for you. <laughs> no, no. I just, you know, I'm like, oh. I'm not in church, Jesus. I, I, I'm not in church. <laughs> but, you know, my husband was snoring. You know? What? The church went on without you. Yes. It did. Mm -hmm. It really did. It, it, it really out. did. And, um, you know, God is just faithful. And I am just so glad that um, 
we have this resource. Now, mm -hmm. I, I will tell you too, you said there's no book out there, um, you know, instruction manual or anything similar to that, you know, that's a go-to uh, for, for pastor's wives. But I think that there is enough um, similarities amongst our group that uh, we, we can create one. Oh, oh it's got, I would say that it's gotten better over the years. Yeah. Uh, when I very first started, when we very first started in ministry, there was nothing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a, as things have gone on, you know, Lois Evans has done some stuff and she's pulled some people together. And there's been some other, um, you know, Star Wars that have pulled some things together. And so that there are some things out there now. Mm -hmm. Whereas I remember when we started 30 years ago, there was nothing. Nothing. Um, yeah. So it's gotten better. Yes, yes. So let me ask uh, each of you this one question. Now that you're at this point in your ministries, as they say, if you knew then what you know now, <laughs> Susan's face is lit up. <laughs> what is one thing that you would do differently? And no, telling your husband not to pastor a church is not a part of the answer. <laughs> well, I did that from the very get-go. I mean, I don't know. It, it all yeah. went haywire because I, I didn't marry a preacher. Um, I didn't marry a pastor. I had said because I was raised in a pastor's family, I did not want to marry a preacher. And I did not want to marry a pastor. And I didn't. But I had no idea what God was planning for us. I, I, I had no idea. And God just kind of did it on his own. So, I mean... Ooh, what would I do differently? That's a th that's a thought I haven't really. It's kind of like marriage, you know. You'd want to go in with something, some kind of knowledge, to know how to deal with people. I, I I wish I had more training on how to. I hope that makes sense. How to handle people just in general, because I feel like sometimes that we step into that role of being a pastor with just what charismatic attitude that we currently have and we don't really know how to deal with people and their problems and I really wish that I had known more in depth about that even though I was raised in the pastor's home even though I you know I, I saw what my parents did and went through they kept a lot of that stuff behind doors so that we didn't see that but I wish I would have known a little bit more of, of that caring aspect and how to listen to their problems and and how to be able to counsel those people in the right way to help them, but at the same time to set that boundary between myself and them so that didn't step over into my family. I guess that's probably what I would have preferred to have known ahead of time if, you know, that's just me. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Dr. Van, what about you? So I would have um, done some things with my family very differently. Um, raising our kids, um, I wouldn't have been so church focused mm -hmm. that I missed um, times with our kids. And I think we weren't, you know, going to their games and going to their sports and weren't. I was a teacher when they were young. And so I was, you know, very focused on that and focused on the church. And um, I would say that I probably missed out on a lot of things and didn't see things that probably I should have. So I, that would have been the, probably the, a big piece. I would have done some things differently with our children. Um, and then just looking at it in retrospect, there would have been, um, we would have taken more vacations. We would have done uh, some of those things differently uh, and set up some boundaries in different ways than we did. Um, you know, but like, of course, hindsight is twenty twenty. And, you know, we do oh, the best. she's hitting can. on all my stuff. We do the best <laughs> in with, you know, with what we have. But I mean, I think those would have been yeah. big things because, you know, looking back on it, I mean, our kids are part of our ministry and, you know, they don't, I know a lot of pastor's wives, I mean, a lot of pastor's children that just hate church um, and our kids are not that way mm -hmm. um, as adults. They're, I mean, they're not kids, they're adults, but um, our children, adult children. Um, but yeah, I would have done some stuff. Really good for them. Amen. That's great. Wow. Wow. Real talk. And so this is what mm -hmm. you're going to get. This is just a yes. sampling of what you're going to get. And let me tell you, these ladies have put so much work and effort 
um, into their presentations, you're getting professional grade material. You have got to be in the room. No, the summit will not be playing, um, you know, just generally on Facebook. The only way to gain access to the summit is to register. The tickets are free. So don't mm -hmm. tell me you can't afford it. That it's part. free, free. <laughs> now there is a pastor's wives power pack that I'm telling you, you're going mm -hmm. to want to get because yes. the speakers have contributed over $5,000 worth of freebies for you. That's how much they are passionate about making sure that upcoming pastor's wives or or veteran pastor's wives have what they need to keep going. No one is telling you to give up ministry, to give up on your marriage. This is not that. We're trying to help you make it so that you can do what God has called you to, to do and be the support that you need to be to your husband. And so they have all of these goodies prepared for you in the power in the pastor's wives power pack. Now the power pack isn't free, but I'm telling you, it is worth the minimal cost. It's the value is over five thousand dollars, but the cost to you is pennies on a dollar, mm -hmm. literally. <laughs> pennies right. on a dollar. In, in fact, I'll just let you in on a secret. You want to know how to get the power, the pastor's wives power pack at the, the lowest cost? Buy it as soon as you register because it's only $97. Now, if you say, okay, well, I'll give it some thought and you register and you leave from the registration screen, you don't get that opportunity anymore. The next time you go back to it, the early bird price is 147 and if you say, well, I'm still going to wait, you know, I'm going to wait until the summit actually starts. You can. But at that point, it's one hundred and ninety seven dollars. So you decide. But I'm telling you, the ticket itself to the summit is worth it. It is yes. free. What you're going to be getting cannot be quantified in dollars and cents. This is what you need. This is the event of the year. Yes, I know it's just February, but if you want to make it to December, <laughs> if you want to make it to December, this is the event of the year. Yeah, say that again, Dr. Van. I need you not to be wearing that orange jumpsuit, so come on in the room. Yes, yes, great. yes. Great. I, I know Jesus whipped people out of the temple, mm. but that, that is not an option for us today. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> it, it is not. And so we've got to <laughs> figure it out. And so you want to be in the room. The um, presentations uh, will be played within our balanced ministry, pastors, wives, private Facebook group. The only way to get access to that group is to register for the summit. Yeah. That is the only way. And so there are links already in uh, the chat for this session. Get your ticket. You can be dressed however you're going to be dressed. You can have bedhead. You can be in your jammies. It's okay <laughs> because it's virtual. It is virtual. Do what you have to do. Our speakers are going to be in the chat during their presentations, ready to interact with you, ready to answer questions. I'm telling you, you want to be in the room. Yes. Oh, by the way, I think I mentioned something in the description as we wrap this up. I told you you had to stay till the end that uh, I might give away a little gift during this. Ooh, oh, nice gifts. Huh? Yes, a gift. Sorry, speakers, you're not eligible. <laughs> I just I throw on the towel. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> but uh, to anyone who's watching, and I see we've got a couple of people watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, let's see. I've got someone, they're just listed as a Facebook user. I gotta see who it is. I'm looking on my phone to see if I can tell who it is. Um, there's a Christina John Brown, yes, Christina John Brown, and then there's a Pat Lam Lampkin. And what's so funny is they're both speakers, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, Christina is my pastor's wife, yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness! So, <laughs> well, uh, Sister Christina, I can't show uh, favoritism. 
Okay, we're live. So, <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay, so, um, but one of the gifts I wanted to give a, give away um, is called. It's a, a a reflective journal called Breathe Again. It's a it's a toolkit. It's a 24 page toolkit uh, for pastors' wives. At the very end, there's actually um, a, a scripture based mindfulness session for five minutes. You know how we have no time to do anything, mm. but five minutes where we can sit and you'll hear my voice and I'll be giving you some scriptures to help you breathe. And you know, for those people that that think mindfulness is kind of new age. My only response to that is scripture. Yeah. And my response to that is you're, you're breathing anyway. So mm. <laughs> <You know? laughs> the, scripture, the scripture clearly says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He was talking yeah. about mindfulness. Yes. Yeah. All righty. So, so I want to give it away. Um, and so uh, let's see, since we have a, a couple of speakers here, um, and it's funny because Pastor Pat isn't saying a word. She's not saying a word. Uh -uh. But, uh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, Pastor Pat, uh, I'm going to email it to you because it is digital. It's a download. And so I'll email it to you. Okay, Sister Christina. Actually, I already sent it to Sister Christina. So uh, that because she's the pastor's wife and I wanted her to. You know, to see it and get her input and all that. But uh, anyway, um, I'll be checking the comments too after this session. And uh, if if I come across someone who's not a speaker, I'll also make sure that they get a copy of it. But even if you're watching this on the replay, get your ticket. Get your ticket. It is yes. free. There is no excuse. And you might be saying, "Well, I'm not available on on Thursday, February 29th, or March." first or March the 2nd and I'm not available on those days guess what even with the free ticket you have 24 hours to watch the replay yes you do so uh, I believe you can do it you no can, excuses yeah no excuses you can do this you could do it now if you had the pastor's wives power pack you'd have ongoing access to all of the presentations Come in on. fact you'd have them early Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so make sure that uh, you do what you have to do. We can't wait to see you next week. We are so excited. Yes. Yes. So, uh, yes. Yes. Any any parting words of, of grace, instruction, or anything, or something funny? <laughs> just don't hesitate. Don't wait. Do it now. I yes. can't say it enough. Do it now. Get your ticket now. Get in there. Don't <laughs> miss it. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Dr. Van? I would just say, you know, sis, at the end of the day, we, we can do all the things we want to do. We can put in, you know, all of these things. But take this time to truly allow yourself mm. to be poured into. This is the one time where I will, t I will ask you to be self-centered. Not selfish, but self-centered. I want you to be focused on yourself. Take these couple of days. Lock yourself in the bathroom if you have to. Take your computer in there with you and let somebody pour into you. We have taken the time to record. We've taken the time. We're going to be there. We're going we're gonna to be live in the, in the chat to talk to you. But we want you truly, truly, truly to be poured into, to be uplifted to be encouraged to be affirmed in who you are and what you're going to do so don't wait get your ticket today yes Absolutely. she said it so great yes she did yes she did and i am so awesome. thrilled I, I i didn't mention this either um I'll be uh, one of the speakers uh, myself. I don't really talk about that too much, um, but I'll be opening up the summit with um, this one this one topic that God has given me, and that is leading with fragments, mm -hmm. three steps to overcoming ministerial burnout. And so um, it, it's going to be awesome. The whole summit is going to be awesome. Um, and for those who buy the Pastor's Wives Power Pack, 
you'll get an invitation to uh, two live bonus sessions that will be happening simultaneously um, on Saturday, March the 2nd, around 1.30 p.m. Central Time. And the topic is the power of no. Mm. Come on, it's a whole sentence. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. And uh, I will be doing uh, one session. Uh, we have another speaker, Bonita Owens, who will be doing the other session. And the great thing about uh, Zoom is that uh, you'll you'll be in breakout rooms uh, with each of us. And at the end of about 20 minutes, we'll switch. So you won't miss anything from either one of us. Mm -hmm. And so you'll have that opportunity to learn more about the power of no and how you can implement it in your life. There are workbooks, there are handouts. This is, these are live sessions. You want to be in the room. There's no excuse, no excuse whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, since these ladies are in the ministry, it is in the evening. They have had full days. I think we ought to let them go. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so be blessed, be encouraged. Dr. Van, uh, Sister Rainer, thank you so much for being yes. with us today. Thank you to uh, our viewers who are watching. If you catch it on a replay, get the ticket. I'm checking every single day to find out who has purchased the ticket. And we have people coming from all over the globe already. Amazing. That's awesome. Thank you, yes, Jesus. Yes. So um, get your ticket, folks. Get your ticket. All righty. Thank you so much for being with us. And I hope you have a blessed day. Thanks so much. Bye.